Well, hello there, you scrub lords. And I know it's been a little while. However, I decided to take a short break after putting out two over 30 hour editing sessions into the last couple of videos with both the gun tank concept and the uh, last unicorn review on the Cerbias. However, uh, I am back now. And after taking a short break and playing some battles here and there throughout the last month or so, uh, I wanted to kind of give an overall consensus on the French Ground Forces line that was recently released right before Christmas last year. I didn't want to make a video right off the bat, because I wanted to get through most of the tech tree. In fact, I'm still not even into Tier 6 yet, I'm about halfway through the Amex 30B2 right now. However, up until Tier 5, I've gotten a pretty decent idea of how the French fit in and how they play. And on top of that, what their strengths and what their major weaknesses are. Because they do have some major problems. That said, in, a sh in short, it, we're at the start of the video, in short, I like the French. They are definitely a different playstyle, which is much needed in my opinion, because frankly we've been going far too long without something that's particularly interesting uh, as far as tanks go. Uh, yeah, the tier 6s were fun for a little while, um, but they were only a few vehicles and only a small uh, cadre of players were really able to take advantage of tier 6. The French, however, are have one of the most unique playstyles in the game, and on top of that combine a a really, really interesting series of design choices in their tanks. Uh, oscillating turrets, uh, extremely light vehicles uh, for their for their size, powerful engines in some of their medium tanks that just surpass pretty much anything out there, and of course the drum-type autoloaders that are so prevalent from Tier 3 onwards. Now, I realize that there's been a lot of people who, uh, who've been calling these things OP the last few weeks, and there's always going to be a group of those people who, whenever something is brand new or the flavor of the month, and a lot of people don't know how to fight them yet, everyone's going to call them OP, because they don't know how to fight them yet, they're brand new, and people just have to get used to them. The French are not OP by any stretch of the imagination. Some of their vehicles are a little bit under-tiered, and that can be easily fixed, but for the most part, their vehicles are, they're good for the game. They, they add a type of gameplay that is totally unique compared to anything else that we've seen so far. And more, vo more choice and more variety for me as a player is always welcome. Uh, the French, I really think, are meant for players who can take vehicles that have severe weaknesses and massively exploit the strengths that they have while trying to minimize those weaknesses as much as possible. I'm not saying that bad players should avoid the French. I'm saying that if you're going to take on the French tech tree, be aware that they do have some problems, but if you can utilize their strengths, then you have probably one of the most powerful tech trees in the game. Not overpowered, but very, very much powerful. Now, getting through the low tiers is going to be a challenge, because really, the, the sweet spot for the French tanks in War Thunder is tiers 3 to 5, from what I've experienced. Tier 6 is okay, it, 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 can be, it can be done, you can do well, but really the best, the most interesting vehicles, at least for me, are the vehicles between tier 3 and tier 5. So as I started to do earlier, let's talk through the tiers real quick. So tier 1, a lot of two-man tanks, very, very small light tanks that don't generally have very much armor, they're not very mobile, their guns kind of suck, they're just not very good. Tier 1 is going to be a nightmare, and that, that I will fully admit, there is no easy path if you, sh if you choose not to pay your way through uh, or buy a premium. Uh, getting through Tier 1 for the French is going to be a nightmare, it's going to be a struggle. I mean, when your standard French vehicles are struggling to penetrate Panzer 3s at less than 200 meters, you know you might or not, might not have a problem. I mean, it's, it's not an easy first tier to get through, because it's like their best armored tank at that tier has, the, has probably one of the worst guns in the game, 
I mean, an APCR round with 34 millimeters of penetration, I think it's on the uh, FCM 36. I just had to look it up real quick. One of the worst tanks in the game. Uh, the, the, the French overall at Tier 1 are just not very good. Interestingly enough, the highlight of the French Tier 1 is their SPAA vehicle, the tractor with the four 13.2 millimeter uh, Hotchkiss machine guns. That thing is hilarious. And it's probably one of the best SPAAs at Tier 1, which is really saying something. Uh, like, if that's a highlight vehicle at Tier 1, then that says a lot about how poor the, the Tier 1 French tanks are. Tier 2, however, starts to get a little bit better. Tier 2, you get the Char B, which is not a terrible vehicle. It's not a great vehicle, but, vehicle, but it's not a terrible one. I mean, it could be far worse. The uh, If you have the B1 Tear, even better, because you actually get a little bit of horizontal traverse on that 75mm cannon. And you get more armor, which is always a plus. And I think that's also when you start to get some of the American tanks that are in the that are thrown into the French tech tree to kind of help fill them out a little bit. If you're coming into the French as a new player, the M10 tank destroyer that's in there, the M4 A1, or the M4A1 Sherman, that's a great vehicle to start with. Uh, you also get access to the S35 and the SAU40, which are basically the same chassis. The S35 being the medium, the French medium tank, which is widely considered one of the best medium tanks of the pre-war period. And then you get the SAU40, which was a, a a prototype tank destroyer based on the S35 chassis that's been widened a little bit with a 75mm cannon planted in the hull. Very, very similar to the one on the Char B, but a little bit longer barrel, a little bit higher velocity, a little bit more penetration. That being said, it's, it's still awful penetration, but it's still better than nothing. So, you've got that as well. Like I said, they already already the B1 base. You get the AMC-35, which is essentially a, a light combat tank. And it's, it's not particularly amazing, but it's not... Horrid, I guess. Oh, let's face it, it's not that good. <laughs> it's still, it's kind of like a leftover tier one vehicle that, that I feel like Gaijin just kind of threw in at the last minute. Like, oh yeah, we forgot about this thing. Oh, where do we put it? Uh, tier two. And then they just kind of released it, but I, it, it could be completely different than that. But that's just what I get as an impression from that. So yeah, tier two is, is okay for the French. It's not great, but it's not terrible either. Moving on to tier three. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. Uh... Let's start with the light tanks, actually. You get the Amex 13 FL11, which, while it doesn't have an auto loader, does have a, a re decently powerful 75mm cannon. Uh, it only manages about 100 millimeters of penetration, but it's not terrible, like I said. Uh, it's also it's also got access to the new spotting mechanic, which I, I guess I will also tack on here in a little bit uh, when we get up to like the Amex 13s and so on, or the other Amex 13s. You get access to the spotting mechanic, and it's it's decently mobile. It's not a, a, a speed demon like a lot of people were hoping that the Amex 13s would be. They're, they have a relatively low horsepower engine, all things considered, uh, and they're still 13-ton machines. I mean, that's what Amex 13 stands for. Amex vehicle of 13 tons. Again, these were meant to be paradropped into uh, to support paratroopers and so on, and also to be able to easily be transported around the French countryside. So, Amex 13 FL11, decent vehicle, nothing particularly wrong with it. I kind of like to think of it as a slightly better chaffy with a rear-mounted turret. That's kind of the way I look at it. And then you get the, for the medium tanks, you get two of them. You get the premium uh, M4A1 FL10, which we will get to, and you get the M4A4 SA50, also known as the M50 Super Sherman, which has an uh, which has a long barrel 75 millimeter cannon, very much equivalent to a Panther, but far more powerful. Uh, it's actually more equivalent to a Firefly uh, than anything else. However, the difference is is that this one actually gets some gun depression. <laughs> The M50 Super Sherman, because of the weird turret extensions that it has added on to it, uh, can actually manage 10 degrees of gun depression, which is pretty impressive considering how large that gun is uh, inside that cramped turret. And as a result, it's astonishingly effective. It's a very, very, very solid vehicle. It's got 100 and like 180 millimeters of penetration at 4.7 battle rating. You'll punch right through the front of a Churchill Mark 7, and the Churchill Mark 7 up until now really didn't have very many vehicles that, uh, or very many uh, vehicles outside of heavy tank destroyers, like, uh, the German Sturry Mill or the Nassorn, that had any real hope of penetrating that thing from the front, unless you use, like, APCR or something like that at point-blank range. The French tanks can just laugh at a Churchill Mark 7, which is really, really saying something. The other one, the M41 FL10, is a little bit controversial, um... And understandably so, it's probably a bit under-tiered, just a bit. <laughs> uh, when this thing first came out, uh, I remember the, I think it was like either the first or second game I played in that vehicle, I was playing with uh, SW Pixie from Beehive, and we, we got Berlin, 
uh, and we went and uh, we spawned in the south, and we went up onto that hill just to the just to the east of the south spawn, and we just parked ourselves behind two destroyed tank wrecks and just managed, racked up like thirteen kills between us. Uh, I think I got seven, he got six, or something like that. Either that, or was the other way around. And the M41 FL10, I think, kind of uh, summarizes the upcoming tier four, or like the the later on French tanks tier four and five, uh, in to a later to a lesser extension tier six, in the fact that the French tanks, for the most part, are fire support vehicles. They are generally second line or flanking. Uh, ad ad not really an ambushing tank, but flanking attacks, um, second line fire support. So you have you have heavier tanks go forward. Say if you're playing with the Germans uh, or with the Americans, the Americans roll forward with their uh, with their jumbo Shermans or something like that, and you come up behind them with uh, with these things. Uh, high penetration, uh, really good high damage because of the AP buff, which was it's which was massively helpful, by the way, Gaijin. I love the AP buff. It's amazing. Anyways, heavy tanks roll forward. You bring up an M41 FL10 uh, behind it, and you give all sorts of extra support. Uh, being able to take out the heaviest tanks, like you can, you can straight up just destroy HRTR Mark 7 from the front with an M41 FL10 inside of 100 meters without any real problems. Uh, and especially if that thing got an up tier and it got its improved uh, APC-BC round because uh, for whatever reason it, they didn't give it the APC-BC round. I don't know if that's because the M4 and 1FL10 was so early on modification they didn't have that ammunition yet um, or it was some other factor but yeah moving on um, to the heavy tanks. Uh, they get the Aero 44 ACL1 at 4.0 and the Aero 44 ACL1 on paper looks very unimpressive. But it's actually not a bad vehicle by any means. It's it's actually quite powerful uh, at its tier. It can withstand uh, quite a bit of punishment. The turret is very, very well armored. And it's funny because everybody shoots you in the turret. And they always seem to bounce for some reason. Uh, and the gun on it is about average. It's about the same as the American 76mm cannons at tier in terms of uh, penetration and anti-armor performance. So it's not a bad gun by, uh, by any means. And it's... It's not amazingly fast, but it's not ridiculously slow either uh, for being a heavy tank. It's, it's, it's an all-around average good vehicle. There's nothing particularly bad about it. There's nothing particularly amazing about it. And then moving on after that, you get a, a French Sherman Jumbo. Now, I'm kind of of the opinion that this, that this Sherman Jumbo probably should have been a premium, but Gaijin decided to put it in the standard French tech tree. Now that being said, the reason why I say it was a French, it should be, it should technically be a premium in my opinion, is because well, it's not French, it's an American tank. And on top of that, there was only a few units that were ever issued with jumbo assault tanks. Uh, maybe to give them some armor at that tier, because the French really don't. That's that's the one thing the French really lack. They really lack a front line heavy tank that can absorb hits and keep on and keep an attack uh, momentum going. Uh, they really, really, they do lack that, and the jumbo Sherman does give them that. Um, and it does really help at that tier, uh, because the thing that I was always afraid of, and sometimes does happen at the higher tiers, is that since the French really don't have a lot in the way of staying power in terms of a in terms of a drag out slugfest, they generally if they get pushed hard, like and you trap them in an area, the French have a hard time shooting their way out. Um, especially if they're if they're stuck in frontal engagements, they they tend to have a lot of hard times with that. And uh, the Jumbo Sherman allows them to keep an attack moving forward. So that's a good thing. The CCKW 353 anti-aircraft truck with the 40mm Bofors is its not particularly good. I mean, it's great for anti-tank work. Because it's a 3.0 battle rating SPAA with a 40mm Bofors. But as far as anti-aircraft work goes, it's completely useless. <laughs> Or completely worthless. Uh, the next AA that I'll get into is actually much better at it. But uh, and then finally the ARL 44, and that thing is the only 5.7 French tank that they actually have. And it's it's not a bad tank by any means. And for whatever reason, it's labeled as a tank destroyer. I don't know if that's because the, that's what the French labeled it as uh, or not. But the the 90 millimeter cannon on it is most definitely capable. It can it can do quite a bit of damage. And uh, it's it's not particularly bad in any way. Like it's like the it's like the previous ARL. It's not 
It's not terrible. I mean, the ar the turret armor is kind of lackluster at, by that point. The 100 millimeters uh, that's relatively flat is not great. I mean, at long range, even it, really the only way you're going to bounce something is at especially long range, like 2,000 meters, really. Because uh, especially if you're running up against like King Tigers or uh, or even Tiger Ones or Panthers, they're just going to punch right through your turret armor, and it's not, and generally they'll only kill the crew members in there, which is a good thing. But at the end of the day, uh, when you have to expose your turret and that's your weakest armor in order to shoot something, that's always uh, something that you have to be aware of, and that can be tough to to get around. However, the ERL 44 overall is not a terrible vehicle. I'm not saying don't buy it, it's not it's not worthless by any means. It's a fun vehicle to play. A lot of these vehicles are just fun. There's very few vehicles that I would that I would point to and say, don't play that. Because it's not fun. And, and there are a couple. <laughs> Believe me, there are a couple. But as far as tier 3 goes, there's nothing really there that suggests that you should never play any of them. Um I would say, as far as anti-aircraft work goes, get rid of the uh, get rid of the 40 millimeter Bofors truck as soon as you can. But I, I mean, it's it, if you're really looking for a good anti-aircraft weapon, you could use the Hotchkiss uh, tractor up until 4.7 when you get your AMX 13 DCA 40, which I'll talk about uh, here in a minute. But yeah, tier three for the French is pretty good. It's it's not. Uh, it's not overpowered, um, but it's not. It's it's definitely not lacking by any means, and it's it's a lot of fun to play. Uh, they are, they're going to require you to use your head in order to really succeed. It's not going to be one of the with the, maybe the exception of the jumbo. It's not really going to be one of those tech trees where you can just jump in and throw yourself at the enemy and expect to succeed. You do have to think about what you're doing to a certain extent. Now, moving on to Tier 4. Uh, tier 4 is really... Probably, if not the number 1 tier for me, it's, it's easily number 2. Uh, tier 4 France is probably their peak in terms of fun factor for me. Uh, I've always been a fan of Tier 4. I've always really loved playing at Tier 4. I think it's a nice balance between late war technology, uh, which I find supremely interesting... Uh, late war technology and early Cold War concepts. I, I think that uh, that blend uh, really, really suits me. I really quite like that. I know it doesn't appeal to everybody, but that's just what I like. And the French do deliver here. The French, after World War II, I mean, really, their post-war tanks start at Tier 3 because the French tank industry obviously really couldn't grow or develop all that much while they were under occupation by a certain country that shall not be named. But once once the world once World War II ended, the French decided to completely throw away everything they knew. <laughs> they took everything that they had, threw it all up in the air, and said, fuck it, we're going to come up with something brand new. And they did. So we see traces of that in Tier 3, but more so in Tier 4. I'll start, again, I'll start with the light tanks. You get the AMX-13, the standard AMX-13 with the FL-10 turret mounting the auto-loading 75mm SA-50 cannon. And that gun is very, very competitive. Even at 6.0, even though its best round will only give you about 180 millimeters of penetration, 183, you're not going to be fighting head head on with a King Tiger with this thing. And the AMX 13SS11 will also get to here. Um, you're not going to be fighting head on with a King Tiger, but that's not really its role. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the scouting uh, there was a scouting mechanic added into Warthen, which I'm sure many of you have already used to a certain degree. It, or at least to some extent. And the spotting mechanic, in short, I really love it. It's a great addition, and it gives it helps give light tanks a purpose outside of just fast little tank destroyers, uh, which is really all they were up until now. They Now they really have a proper reconnaissance purpose. Uh, being able to spot out enemy on the map and let your team know the locations of enemy vehicles that they may not that your teammates may not have noticed and get compensated for it, I think is a really, really good system, and that was well thought out and well done. My only complaint with it, the cooldown time for not marking an actual target is way too long, because if you don't actually mark a target, the game, like, penalizes you and, like, gives you, like, a 30-second cooldown before you can spot anything else, which, to me, seems really arbitrary and doesn't really make sense. Now, I understand what they're trying to do there is, is prevent people from just spamming the scout button over and over again, but make it just a normal cooldown, like you have when you actually do spot something. 
Because you won't be able to spot, like, six enemies in a row in, like, half a second like you can in Battlefield. It's not a matter of just spamming your Q key or whatever spotting key you have it set to. In, in War Thunder, it's a matter of you spot a single vehicle and then you wait for, for like, five to ten seconds or something or however long it takes. And then you can spot another one. If they did that, even though you weren't spotting anything, that would be a much better system, I think. Instead of just penalizing people for, let's just say you were planning on spotting something on the move, and you hit a rock, and your crosshair went up into the air, and you press the button. Now you get to wait for 30 seconds, and now you are completely useless as a scout for that duration. That doesn't make any sense to me. Going back to what I was saying, Amex 13, decent vehicle all around. The only big issue with both the Amex 13 and the Amex 13 SS11, and the Amex 13 HOTS, and the Amex 13 90, is that their power to weight ratio is quite low for a light tank. It's not very fast, it's very sluggish, it, even when it's fully upgraded. It is not a speed demon by any stretch of the imagination you are severely limited in your overall mobility. Your top speed is okay, but your acceleration and your ground resistances are just not very good. And that's a problem, because it means that as a light tank, normally your job would be to rush into a good spotting position and then be the eyes for your team. And occasionally, if a guy isn't paying attention, take a shot at him. Because of this lack of mobility on the light tanks, and because the medium tanks, like which we'll get to here in a moment, are so much more mobile, it kind of defeats the purpose of, of a lot of these uh, light tanks being actual scouts. Yes, they have the mechanic and no other class of vehicles do, other than a couple of uh, light tank destroyers for the Americans. But again, it kind of defeats the purpose of having these light scout vehicles at higher tiers. I think that the standard Amex 13 can definitely go down in battle rating. Right now, it's at, a, it's at a 6.0. I think it'd be far more comfortable at 5.7. Because uh, at 6.0, it, it can get thrown up against 7.0 vehicles. And really, an Amex 13 with a 75mm cannon isn't that useful against if you're having to face a King Tiger 105. And granted, like I said, if you're having to face a KT-105 from the front you run smack into him, you've kind of failed as a scout. Or whether or not they'll buff the Amex 13 by dropping its battle rating remains to be seen. I do think it could use a little bit of a drop. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Overall, the Amex 13 is not a bad vehicle. I've had some good success in it. It's not a bad tank. I, Mike Goes Boom made a video on the Amex 13 SS11 in particular uh, on the dev server saying that it was a bad tank and you shouldn't buy it. I totally disagree with that statement. The Amex 13 SS11 appeals to a very, very spe a specific playstyle. It is very much a scout, it is not a combat vehicle, and it the fact that it has missiles gives it great the great ability to reach out and touch somebody from a very, very long range. At such a long range that it becomes very difficult for a lot of vehicles to properly range you in and get good first hits on you. Uh, or get good hits on you in the first place. Because generally, if you're firing missiles at long range, you can see the you can see them coming. Now granted, if you have a missile in the air, then well, you're kind of stuck there and you kind of have to hope that he misses, but the, the manual missiles, I know Mike has never really liked manual missile control, and that's fine, but for those of us who are actually good at using manual targeting with the missiles, they're great, as long as they don't just decide to nosedive into the ground for some indiscernible reason, which, why Gaijin hasn't fixed that, I don't know yet. But when the missiles do work, and you can act and you can hit targets with them, that as long as they're stationary, if they're moving, then it becomes a lot more difficult. Um, if, they're if they're a stationary target that's not paying attention, go for it. They're not going to they're not going to hear your gunshot. They're, the first thing they're going to know they're going to be fired at by a missile is when it hits them. So, or unless they happen to look at the missile as it's coming towards them. So, I mean, the Amex 13 SS11 is not a terrible purchase. However, if you're buying it with the intention of using it like let's say an M24 Chaffee at low tiers, like you know, bringing, or M22 Locust, and like bringing it against Tigers, like, haha, I'll just circle straight for you because you can't shoot me. Um, it's not, it's not going to be a good vehicle for that. In fact, it's quite awful at it. So just take that into account when you are thinking of purchasing the MX-13 SS11. Uh, if you're looking for a just solid all-around premium vehicle that you don't have to worry about too much because it's, it's just already good right out of the box, the M4 and one FL10 will perfectly suit your purpose. Now, granted, the problem with buying the M4A1 FL10 is, is that once you start getting into the higher tiers, like Tier 4 and Tier 5, uh, it starts to struggle with it in terms of gaining RP. So, keep that in mind. Okay, moving on to the medium tanks. The Lorraine 40T. Now, there's been some controversy over the Lorraine 40T and the fact that it's just one of the best medium tanks in the game right now. And that's saying something. 
It does have a lot of things going for it. It is fast as fuck, boy. It has great reverse speed, which surprisingly, and I, I guess kind of ironically, most of the French vehicles don't actually have very good reverse speeds. They're they're very decent in terms of forward mobility, but most of them can't go past 5 kilometers per hour in reverse, which is a serious problem. The Lorraine 40T can do 24 kilometers per hour in reverse, which is really saying something. On top of that, it is extremely lightweight, and it has a really, really good horsepower to ton ratio. I believe it is... It's about 21.25, so 21.25 horsepower per ton for a medium tank, especially that large, is quite impressive, all things considered. Now, the reason why it gets it gets that far is because it ditches pretty much all of its armor. It's got 40 millimeters of hull armor. To put this in perspective, that's less than the T-34 or D-5, and it's the size of a King Tiger in terms of height. It's not a small tank by any means, and it's not a, a well-armored tank by any means. The turret can be a little bit bouncy, but generally speaking, that doesn't help you. But the gun on it is actually quite interesting. The 100mm gun is probably one of the best guns at Tier 4. It's not the best gun, but it's one of the best. And that's more down to the Lorraine 40T having a 7-shot autoloader with a 7.5 second reload or something like that. Or a 7 second reload, I'm sorry. And that, in and of itself, is really, really crucial. Having the autoloader... Uh, the seven shot all order means that yeah your shells may not do tremendous amounts of damage and they can do quite a bit of damage but it means that if for example you mess up a shot it doesn't take that long before you're back in action with another round uh, and it means that combined with uh, the whole with the turret traverse like almost all the French tanks have but this thing has over 30 degrees of turret traverse that's better than a lot of SPAAs because of the uh, of the combination of awesome turret traverse speed and quick firing auto loading mechanism it means that this vehicle can put out serious punishment and it can react quite quickly despite none of the french tanks having stabilizers they can all react quickly to a changing situation which is not something that a lot of vehicles can say yeah there are some vehicles that are immensely deadly but they can't react very quickly actually i think the panther 2 is probably a better example of this because the turret traverse on the panther 2 is so bad you have to turn the entire hull of the tank in order to aim at an enemy Whereas with most French tanks, yeah, you may have to turn the hull a little bit to, to boost it for a short time. Your horizontal traverse is so fast that you can just get the gun onto target and pull the trigger. So it's kind of, it works as kind of like a pseudo-stabilizer. Now, it's not going to allow you to fire on the move very accurately, but you can fire on a short halt relatively quickly. The AMX M4, on the other hand, which is, we're getting into the medium-slash-heavy tank line again, the AMX M4 is, a, is kind of a discount uh, AMX 50. It's the AMX, think of it as, like a, a, as an amalgamation between the ARL-44 and the AMX-50 medium tank, which comes after it. You get the gun of the ARL-44 combined with a 7-shot autoloader and a turret that is pretty decently well-armored. It's not, it's not terribly, uh, it's not great armor, but it's still there. You get Panther hull armor, you get 80 millimeters on, uh, sloped on the upper front plate, and you get a 1,000 horsepower engine. Now, granted, the transmission only uh, allows much less than that, so you're not as mobile. In, in addition, your reverse speed is still stuck at 5 kilometers per hour, which is a huge handicap, and you can't neutral steer. So, really, the only way for that vehicle to maneuver in, in any real way is to be moving forward. If you're trying to turn on the spot or trying to turn your tank around, it's going to take you a long time. And this extends to the AMX-50 as well, but we'll talk about that. However, the AMX-M4's real chief, real chief advantage is its battle rating. It's 6.0. And a lot of 6.0s and 6.3s right now are getting down-tiered. Or they're, at most, getting up-tiered into 6.7 games. Uh, they aren't seeing a lot of straight 7.0 games. And the AMX-M4, even at 7.0, is not a terrible vehicle. It can still hold its own, very much so. And if you get thrown into a down-tier against, like, Tiger 1s, it is lunchtime. Because the... The EMX M4 has the armor of a panther, but the speed of a Hellcat, basically. It, it like it's not it's not quite as fast or maneuverable. But once you get this thing going, it gets going at a pretty good click. Like I think the top speed is like 50 kilometers an hour or something like that, which is not bad. And it will and it will do 35 to 40 relatively easily on most terrain. Interestingly enough, actually, I find that most of the French vehicles tend to handle better on medium terrain than they do on hard terrain. I don't know why. But if you're traveling on roads, you tend to travel slower with, uh, with a lot of these French vehicles than if you're traveling over, over, like, grass, for example. Don't know what's up with that, but that's just been what I've noticed. Again, 7-shot autoloader, like I already mentioned. The penetration is, is the exact same as the ARL-44, about 193 millimeters. 
uh, at point blank range, which is more than enough to deal with king tigers uh, at close range. Now, if you're fighting at long range, you're going to have trouble, but again, this thing isn't really meant to go heads up with a king tiger. It can deal with a tiger one without any real issue, though, and panthers for that matter. So a great all-around tank, fast, mobile, uh, the, the maneuverability is a little bit lackluster, the elevation depression angles are okay, 8 degrees is not bad by any means, and, uh, and the gun does help it, and mainly it's its battle rating of 6.0, which really makes that vehicle. After that, we're going to move on to the Amex 50, like I mentioned. Uh, the Amex 50 is kind of like, it's the Holland engine from an Amex M4 but the turret of the Lorraine 40T. So you've got the 100mm 7-shot autoloader that we already talked about. Uh, the 100mm gun, by the way, I should have mentioned this earlier, has 226 millimeters of penetration at uh, 10 meters or 100 meters or something like that. Not a bad gun. That's actually pretty close to the T29. Actually, a little bit better than the T29's gun. If we're counting the, T the T13 APC-BC round with HE filler, not the not the T32 APBC round. That one has much more penetration. Regardless, the gun has good velocity on it. I think it's over a thousand meters per second or right at about a thousand meters per second. It's also got immense rate of fire because of that auto loader and it'll do quite a bit of damage. Now you're going to struggle against some foes with very very thick and heavy armor. Generally something with over 200 millimeters of armor on the front you're really going to struggle with. Uh, Ferdinand's are a good example. I recently had a game today where I shot three rounds out of Ferdinand and not realizing he was angled towards me, and he just shot me twice and insta-killed me. Again, your whole armor is 80 millimeters, not really going to save you at 6.7 where this thing sits. However, uh, it retains the mobility of the MXM4 and a lot of the handling characteristics. So, nothing crazily different there. Uh, I should also mention that the Lorraine 40T is 6 at 6.3, which a lot of people say is too low. I'm inclined to agree a little bit. That thing should go up to 6.7. Uh, not 7.0, 7.0 is way too high, but 6.7 I think would be just right for that vehicle. It's kind of like the Centurion Mark III, I think, uh, and the FV4202. Both of those vehicles really deserve to be at 6.7. There's really no good reason why they're at 6.3, except for maybe the Lorraine's armor, but that hasn't turned out to be that much of a factor. Gaijin, I think, put it there to be cautious. But overall, with the exception of the Lorraine, pretty much everything else at this tier is kind of right where it needs to be. Amex 13 DCA 40. This is really the SPAA that you're going to be using most of the time from Tier 3 to uh, Tier 5, up until you get to the Amex 30 DCA, which is an awesome anti-aircraft vehicle, want to add. Uh, the Amex 13 DCA 40 is a... It's just an Amex 13 hull with a new turret on it, but it's mounting a post-war uh, French-built, license-built version of the uh, of the L-70 Bofors gun, which means that it has a, a drastically increased rate of fire. I think it's like 250 rounds per minute. Uh, and the and it it's got some decent ammo choices available to it. Ever since they changed the um, they fixed the uh, sparking issue, SPAs have been a lot easier to play. Now, granted, this one is not going to be the easiest to play because its horizontal traverse is actually quite lacking. Um, for whatever reason, they 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 introduced this even lighter turret than the previous ones, but they couldn't give it a higher rate of uh, traverse. I don't know if that was just because they didn't have room or some other weird factor. But this thing only has. Uh, like 20 something degrees per second turret travels, which for most French tanks is quite awful. It also means that, especially in some of the higher tier games that you get into, like 6.7 and 7.0 and some of the 7.7 .7 games, if you're still using it, uh, it means that it can't track most of the aircraft that fly in front of it. It has to be, it can track them in a vertical plane, but not in a horizontal plane. The vertical plane, it's actually quite fast, but if something is flying from left to right or right to left in front of you, Forget it. You're not going to catch him. Even if you turn, if you even if you rotate the hull, you're probably not going to catch him. However, it's not a bad SPAA. I I can recommend it over the uh, over the uh, SPAA truck that you get previously. The CA Lorraine, the last tier four vehicle, is an excellent tank destroyer. The only downside about the Lorraine is that, well, other than its complete lack of armor, but that's neither here nor there. Now, the Lo the normal Lorraine doesn't have any armor either. So what's the point? The only problem with the Lorraine. Uh, 100, the, uh, the tank destroyer version, uh, based on the Lorraine 40T's chassis, is that it doesn't have an autoloader. <laughs> now, it was never fitted with one, historically, but if it had an autoloader, that thing would be amazing. Because the CA Lorraine, because it doesn't have an autoloader, you're, you're stuck with that same 100mm gun, but you're stuck with, like, a, uh, at best, like, a 12-second reload on it. The other main thing going for this Lorraine 100 is its speed. This thing has an incredible power to weight ratio. It's like 25 horsepower per ton, which means that it, to put this in perspective, the MBT 70 is a 29 horse or the KPZ 70 is a 29 horsepower per ton. So it's, it's only four horsepower per ton less than the KPZ 70. 
it is ridiculously fast and mobile and maneuverable. Like this thing, this little bugger gets around and it gets around fast. Tier five though, is kind of the pinnacle of the of the weird ass French tank designs. This is where you get the Amex 50 Serbias uh, that I've already made a unicorn review on. If you haven't seen that, you must be living under a rock. The Amex 30 1972 is also there. The Amex 1390, the Amex 30 DCA, and the Amex 50 Fosh. All of them are great vehicles, but let's start with the light tanks again. Uh, the Amex 1390, uh, it's, the, it's the same old Amex 13, but instead of firing uh, 90 millimeter AP, or like a 75 millimeter AP rounds that are not particularly effective against the front armor of a lot of heavy tanks, the Amex 1395 is heat FS as standard with 320 millimeters of penetration at 7.0 battle rating. Which effectively makes it like an M like a French M56 Scorpion with a slightly higher battle rating and a fully rotating turret. And um, it's got a I think it's like a 12 shot uh, auto loader on it with like a six second reload or something like that. I don't remember the exact reload time on it, but it's fast. The tank isn't terrible, but what really hurts it is the fact that heat FS damage right now is awful. <laughs> yes, you can punch through pretty much anything you look at, but your ability to actually finish off enemy tanks is probably going to be more useful than anything else. You're basically, if you're going to be using that 90mm cannon, you're basically going to be using it against tanks that aren't paying attention, that have already been heavily damaged, and you're just finishing them off. You are a sort of late game predator in terms of if you want to be fighting with that vehicle. Most of the time, however, you are a scout, like the, like the rest of the Amex 13s. You're not particularly fast, you're not in crazily maneuverable. And for example, an RU251 does pretty much the same job as this thing does, but slightly better, I would say. And it's at a lower battle rating. So, and it fires pretty much the same ammunition too. The only real thing that the Amex 1390 has over the RU is that it, it has reload. Other than that, an RU251 will do the job better than you in terms of scouting and flanking and so on. So you do have to be careful of that when driving this vehicle. Not a bad vehicle, however. It just means that you're going to have to be pay, be paying more attention than you would normally. Amex 30 1972 is kind of a mixed bag. It's probably the, I'd probably say overall, it's probably the worst of the tier fives, but that doesn't mean it's a terrible tank. What really lets it down again is the heat damage because this thing only has heat rounds. Uh, it doesn't have heat FS uh, because the French never used heat FS and I'll get to that in a moment, but it's not horrible either. It doesn't have a stabilizer. It's, mu it's very much like a Leopard 1 copy, but it's slower. It does have a coaxial 20 millimeter cannon, which is very, very welcome. Having cannons as coaxes is awesome because it means that you don't have to waste ammunition on light vehicles like trucks or something like that. You could just use the 20 millimeter auto cannon and get away with it. The heat rounds on it really are what holds it back. The, the reload on it isn't bad either, by the way. Ford's mobility is slightly worse than a Leopard's. It's backwards mobility is slightly worse than a Leopard's. The Leopard is still a better tank overall because it can fire APDS. The heat FS days are very much gone. The heat round spam days are very much gone, I think. But the heat rounds on this thing leave a lot be to be desired. There's been multiple cases where I've shot a, for example, a T-54 mod 1947 from the front, and the only thing I did was kill his driver and his loader and did nothing else to the tank. All he did was just stop, turn around, and shoot me once and I died. So that's kind of my experience with the Amex 30 in 1972. However, if you can make the Amex 30 1972 work and you can get around the horrible heat round damage and you can aim for ammo racks and aim for disabling shots and so on and not count on a lot of fragmentation to save you, it's not a terrible vehicle. It's not bad. It's not the greatest by any means. Definitely not the best in this uh, at tier five, but it's not terrible. As far as Leopard clones go, not horrible, but it's probably the weakest of the bunch. All right, so Amex 50, uh, Serbias. I don't think I really have to talk about this one too much because I kind of explained a lot of it in the Serbias Unicorn review, so I'm just going to skip over this one for the most part. Second line fire support vehicle, devastating gun, high rate of fire, lots of fun to play, very, very satisfying gun to play with. But again, I explain all that in the Unicorn review, so go watch that. Amex 30 DCA. This thing is essentially the Amex 30 hull with the with the twin 30 millimeter Hispano Suiza uh, cannons or auto cannons mounted in a turret, but very close together. So it's a Falcon, but better. It's more mobile. It's also got an exhaust smoke system, which I found actually to be very helpful in terms of getting away. It saved my ass a couple times. In addition to smoke grenades, that's something else I should have mentioned earlier. Some a lot of these French tanks that you would hope have smoke grenades, like Lorraines and uh, Amex 50s. I do, I believe. Uh, do not have them, which is a problem. But, again, going back to the Amex 30 DCA, the exhaust smoke system is very, very useful if you need to run away from, from an opponent. 
So just keep, turn that on and turn yourself around and run in the opposite direction and just make sure you go in a zigzag and don't go straight away so that way they don't just shoot through the smoke at where your last known position was. Uh, and you can you can ninja vanish quite quickly with that thing. Uh, in addition, the, the turret rotation speed is excellent for shooting at aircraft. It's great for shooting at jets. Uh, high rate of fire. It's also got twice the ammunition load of a Falcon. And the Falcon, I believe, is like 650 rounds or something like that, or 600 rounds. This thing has two clips of 600 rounds. So, definitely an improvement overall over the Falcon. And because the guns are closer together, uh, and they're right, right next to each other, and they're not split up on either side of a turret, uh, your density of fire is a lot, also, also a lot closer together. Moving on, finally, to the last vehicle here uh, in Tier 5, the Amex 50 Fosh. Now, the Amex 50 Fosh is probably the best Tier 5 tank destroyer in the game, as far as having gun armor and mobility, too. This just combines all three types, uh, or the all, all three of the best things that you want at a, uh, out of a Tier 5 tank destroyer. The gun on it is the same thing as the M103's 120mm gun, just without a fume extractor, uh, and it's the same gun on the Amex 50. The thing that you trade in terms of effectiveness is that you trade the auto-loading mechanism of the Amex 50 and the rate of fire for much better armor. The frontal hull armor in places is over 320 millimeters thick. Uh, the upper front slope itself is 180 millimeters, sloped at 55 degrees. So it will stop heat FS rounds from an RU-251 at point blank range without a problem, which is pretty much unheard of for most steel armored vehicles. Really, you can only start stopping those rounds once you start getting into uh, the uh, the composite armor era. But this thing, with steel armor, it stops heat FS rounds, which is impressive, to say the least, uh, at, especially at this tier. Uh, it's also got a coaxial 15mm uh, machine gun, uh, or, or light cannon, uh, which is very, very useful for spraying down uh, light vehicles that try and flank you, because your side armor, while your frontal armor is amazing, your side armor is garbage. <laughs> It's 40 millimeters and it's pr practically flat all the way back and the, basically the rest of your tank is a box. Not very well angled uh, and it also means that if you angle the tank at all uh, to the left or right, you're exposing that side armor and because it's so thin, it, it can get overmatched by a lot of different guns um, quite easily. Okay, let's move on to tier 6. So, tier 6. Now, to be totally fair, and to be totally honest, I have, like I've said throughout the video, I have not gotten to Tier 6 yet. However, from what I have heard from people who play Tier 6, is that the AMX 30B2 with the APFSDS round is alright. It's not great, it's not the best thing in the world, but it's usable. And really, to a certain extent, that's all that kind of matters. The other vehicle at Tier 6, the AMX-13 equipped with hot missiles, also has a place, but it's very, very much like the SS-11, just with far more powerful missiles at its disposal. These missiles are aimed uh, via the mouse, rather than according to the keyboard, which makes them much easier to lead targets with, and on top of that, it has the highest penetration missiles in War Thunder. So, 800 millimeters of penetration, you're going to go right through the front plate of a T-64. So, no problems there as far as anti-tank capabilities are concerned, at least with the missiles. However, much like the AMX-13 SS-11, and like I mentioned earlier, this vehicle is first a reconnaissance vehicle, second a tank destroyer. And there is a complete lack of depth of vehicles at Tier 6 currently for the French. This could change in the future, but for now, as of 1.75, the French really don't have a good lineup, a good complete lineup at Tier 6. They don't have a lot of fire support, or they don't have a lot of support vehicles, and really the only stuff that you can bring in there to back it up is sort of stuff that's left over from Tier 5. And with the exception of maybe the AMX 30 DCA, most of them are not particularly suitable for Tier 5, or, or I mean for Tier 6 anyways. The Sir by Sig can certainly do some damage, the Fosh can certainly do some damage, but the Amex 30 1972, you're really, really hindered by that heat FS round, or by the uh, heat round that it had. With very low penetration, 360 millimeters for Tier 6 is really not a lot as far as a 
heat round is concerned. And the AMX 1390 is, while it can be useful, it has even less penetration than the 3072. So, yeah, it's, it's not ideal. You're better off taking an AMX 13 hot, in my opinion. So I think overall that pretty much covers the French. This is, I realize this is like an hour long video, but you know how I tend to ramble. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you leave me what your guys' thoughts are on the French. Are they are they worth it to you? Are they a waste of your time? Do they just not appeal to you? Or are these things that the best things in sliced bread? So, let me know down in the comment section. I read through all of them, and I do check back on them regularly. So, you may see some of my responses to your uh, questions or concerns in the comment section as well. Thank you guys for listening. This has been Many Miles Away. Keep your tracks checked. Keep your bottles in place. Keep it around in the tube. And I will see you guys in the next one.